EV Comply, simplifying your charge point installations. Hey, another week, another podcast, Friday the 15th of July and another roundup for the week. Let's see what's been going on. Kickstarting with the news of the EV Cadillac return, the Celestic. Now it's hand built and ultra luxurious. Details are scarce ahead of its proper debut on the 22nd of this month, but there will be a four-zone smart glass roof. There's several parts of the car that have been 3D printed for intricate detail. We've also got the king's riches of interior materials, and uh, a lot of the features as well are setting the Celestic apart amongst the Teslas, the Lucid, the Porsche, and uh, they're saying they're taking no prisoners in the luxury EV space. We're very very excited for the debut of this. Like I say, it's on the 22nd of this month, so let's see what Cadillac are bringing to the EV table. In other news this week, General Motors and Pilot have announced the Coast to Coast EV Fast Charging Network. They plan to install 2,000 charging stalls powered by EVGo Extend, but they will also be co-branded with Pilot Flying J and Ultimate Charge 360, spread among 500 Pilot Flying J locations. The plan is to put these charges at 50 mile intervals and all these locations will have additional amenities like free Wi-Fi, lounge areas, on-site restaurants and shops that provide travel essentials and souvenirs. The first fully electric Lamborghini will be an all-new radically styled crossover arriving in 2028, adding a fourth model line to the Italian's brand's range, and it will be swiftly followed by an electric-only second-generation Urus SUV. Now, CEO Stephen Winkleman has been talking about currently compromising the Lamborghini Huracan and the Lamborghini Aventador, keeping petrol power as part of a plug-in hybrid system for at least two more generations, the first launching next year and the second at the turn of the decade. This means they could be on sale until at least 2035, when most regions are expected to legislate full electrification for new cars. I mean, some could say it's a slow start, but we would say at least Lamborghini have started. Speaking of new cars and their arrival, the Hyundai Ioniq 5M Performance EV is arriving in 2023. The Concept 6N features a 568 bhp. It's also got the 6's twin motor all-wheel drive drivetrain and it's able to vary the torque delivered to each axle in a heartbeat. The Concept also features lightweight 3D printed parts to counter lugging around heavy batteries. It's got huge brakes and even better cooling and also some rotier noises whatever that means now of course hyundai have focused massively on the electrified performance side of things and we think this is going to be a top contender going from car arrivals to the electric vehicle maker arrival. They've said this week they're considering 800 job cuts. The British electric vehicle maker arrival has said it's considering cutting 30% of roles in a proposed business reorganization that could see up to 800 jobs axed. Arrival said it is in response to the challenging economic environment and remains on course for the production of its electric van later this year. The company also said it would allow it to meet the business priorities until late 2023 using the 422 million pound cash on hand that it has and just when we thought tesla couldn't get any bigger japan's panasonic energy co limited who of course is the battery supplier for tesla plans to build a 4 billion pound ev battery plant in kansas a project that represents the largest economic development project in the state's history and is expected to result in 4,000 direct jobs. Laura Kelly made the announcement yesterday at a joint news conference with Panasonic executives and other state officials. She said this project will be transformative for our state's economy, providing in total 8,000 high-quality jobs that will help more people create better lives for themselves and their children. We will be the production epicenter for batteries that will power the increasing demand for EVs in a more sustainable world. The plants will be located in DeSoto, Can, a city of just 6,000, just west of Kansas City. It will be used to produce lithium-ion batteries. 
Panasonic said its current U.S. battery manufacturing operation has shipped more than 6 billion EV battery cells so far. With the increased electrification of automotive markets, expanding battery production in the U.S. is critical to help meet demand. The CEO of Panasonic Energy said, given our leading technology and depth of experience, we aim to continue driving growth of the lithium-ion battery industry and accelerating towards a net zero emissions future. So last week on the podcast, we spoke about the Hummer EV. Now this week on the podcast, we're talking about General Motors and their replies regarding why the GMC Hummer EV emissions are so high. Now, according to a statement from a company spokesperson, it's because the new electric Hummer is a performance-oriented EV. According to a recent study published by the American Council for an Energy-Efficient Economy, the GMC Hummer EV produces more emissions than a Chevrolet Malibu ICE sedan. General Motors has now replied that the reason for the electric Hummer's inefficiency is the fact that it is a performance-oriented EV which favours going fast over being frugal. And GM is certainly right. There are a few EVs currently on the market that can even hope to match its level of promised excitement. This is a £9,050 off-road ready electric pickup truck that also has 1,000 horsepower and can hit 60 miles per hour in 3 seconds and 90 in under 9 seconds. It does need a massive battery pack for a range of around 330 miles on one charge, so you can imagine it chews through the electrons quicker than virtually any other EV on the market, but this is a vehicle for fun, isn't it really? And General Motors don't seem shy in being very honest that that is the point of the vehicle, so, you know. I mean, someone purchasing a GMC Hummer EV are they purchasing it for lower emissions? You could probably argue not. Some great news for National Grid this week. They have been appointed as the official EV charging provider for the Birmingham 2022 Commonwealth Games. The event will see around 4,500 athletes and 72 nations and territories compete in 19 sports across the 15 competition venues from July the 28th until August the 8th of this year. It's the biggest sporting event ever to be held in the West Midlands, and it's a pretty big EV gig as well, so nice one to National Grid. For those of you who already own an EV, you'll know how daunting it can seem if you're yet to get in one, but yet how simple it is once you've given it a test drive. Now, a new electric vehicle test drive program for this reason has been launched by GridServe Car Leasing at its electric forecourts in Braintree and Norwich. The program is being launched on Saturday, this Saturday that is, at GridServe's first EV Awareness Day of 2022. And drivers are invited to book to drive a range of cars from Tesla Model 3 and Model Y, also Polestar 2, Mercedes EQB and the latest Nissan Leaf. Robert Buckland, Sales and Operation Director at GridServe Car Leasing, said all the best car reviewers test drive cars back to back before they come to their expert verdicts. And we think customers should get the same best in class experience. Now, if this weekend you would like to book a test drive, go online to GridServe Car Leasing and all the information is there. And finally, here at EV Comply, we've been gathering information regarding our app and how you think we could help you further moving forward. And from this information gathered, we are pleased to say we have created our new Buyers Club. It's free to any member of the subscription package for your benefit. It provides access to a number of chosen suppliers from wholesalers, tyre suppliers, stationery, workwear, and even signage for your vans if that's needed. There's a huge list of beneficial partners for you to use to help you and your EV jobs moving forward. So be sure to visit our website, that's ev-comply.com to get involved. So from everybody here, we hope you have a fantastic weekend. And from me, well, I'll be back with you next Friday. Thank <laughs> you.